Hello, my darlings. It's Michaela. So uh, the title of this topic uh, today is my knee hurts. Now what? And so what often happens with a lot of people when they experience discomfort in some aspect of their body is everything stops. They close up shop um, and they just kind of wait for something to magically rekindle and to feel better. And so the truth is the body has miraculous healing abilities. So sometimes that does work. Um, but often there wasn't an, a necess necessarily an injury to begin with to cause this discomfort. Um, so we're talking about the knee. So things that need either a significant amount of time and rest or something more, something like a torn meniscus, um, like an ACL tear, like these are things that are significant and should stop you. But the whole deal is you should be aware that something quite significant has happened. This isn't necessarily some kind of slow um, development through time, okay? So, barring that, and if you have any confusion or question, see your medical professional, okay? Um, do what is going to make you feel most comfortable about something like that. So, barring that, um, what most people experience when they talk about something like knee pain, oh, my knees hurt, therefore I cannot. Um, it's a chronic situation. And so typically that comes as a result of inflammation um, and or weakness. So there are three main things that will keep you free from harm and looking amazing all of your long years. Um, basically it is uh, exercise, pharmaceutical grade supplementation, and low glycemic eating. So exercise, strength training, and cardiovascularly training, uh, cardiovascularly um, challenging exercises. And so that is good for your heart. Exercise helps people live longer if that has not been made abundantly clear. It is not just for vanity's sake. Um, it actually affects our body on a very significant level. Um, plus, the stronger your body is, the more comfortable it's going to be. Typically, pain shows up where there's weakness. Um, so, by doing something with regularity, you will be keeping your body in a more comfortable and able state. Second up, pharmaceutical grade supplementation. And the whole deal with this is that, um, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, I want to, I get all my nutrition from my food. Well, that's unfortunate because there's not a lot in it. A um, hundred years ago, we had a very different situation in terms of soil quality. Today it is compromised, it is low, which is why our food does not give us as much nutrition as we ultimately need, especially because we have more demands either placed on us internally in terms of stress, or we have a more compromised environment in terms of pollution and chemicals. Um, so at any rate, if you're not doing something at the very least, taking a pharmaceutical grade multivitamin, there is, it's kind of a matter of time in terms of what is going to start to break down despite um, or regardless of how um, ideal your diet is, okay? And the whole thing with um, uh, pharmaceutical grade supplementation is that it prevents things like premature aging and premature death. And so whatever is driving you, whether it's living a long life where you feel comfortable, um, and energized, um, or you want to look great, um, do that, okay? Um, put that in your life, it's pretty painless, um, and it has great benefit. Number three is low glycemic eating. And so low glycemic eating essentially means having less carbohydrates, and especially less processed carbohydrates. Um, going more towards the no glycemic eating will put someone in a fat burning mode. I'm very happy to talk about that with anyone if people have an interest or questions. Um, but essentially low glycemic is where you are um, minimizing carbs and minimizing processed carbohydrates. So if you are going to eat them, um, try to have them in less uh, abundance. And also when you are eating them, note how much fiber is in it. 
Note how things feel when you eat them. Note how things feel when you do them. Um, your body is always going to be the greatest guide and informant um, for whatever you're choosing. So if you eat something and you feel full, that sounds like a good use of calories. So whether that is because of fat, whether that's because of fiber or protein, um, those are great things for the body. When we're able to eat an entire bag of potato chips, um, and yet we're like racking up the calories, but we don't necessarily feel full, that is a good thing to register um, and potentially not to be making that choice each and every day, okay? So those are three things that are going to keep you comfortable. They're going to keep you um, energized. They're gonna keep you vibrant. Uh, exercise, pharmaceutical grade supplementation, and low glycemic eating. So please, at the very least, consider making those mainstays of your lifestyle. So, but maybe your knee still hurts. You're doing all these things, which would be amazing. Um, and if you are, you are cutting down on the likelihood of knee discomfort. But if you do have problems still, um, or if you just wanna know how to get out of the weeds in this particular situation, I want to show you how to do a lunge and how to do a squat with minimizing the amount of stress that could be put on your knee, okay? So I'll show you these things. I love that my knee just cracked. <laughs> okay, so a lunge, a lunge uh, is basically an exercise where you have one foot in front and one foot in the back. And what is really helpful when you're doing this is to think about sticking your butt out, okay? So when you stick your butt out, what it does is it brings um, emphasis back over your heel versus over the front of your foot. When there is more stress or strain on the front of your foot, that's when things are going to be in your knee, okay? When it's back over your heel, it's going to be in the back of your leg, your hamstrings and your butt which are actually quite strong muscles and it would do many people um, such a service to have them be more developed um, versus be quad dominant um, or be interior, anterior dominant. That's where most people are. Most people are stronger, tighter on the front of their body, weaker and looser on the back, all right? So using a doorknob is awesome if you have any um, concern about uh, the depth to which you can go or just being able to handle anything um, more significant than potentially minimal movement if you've been going down that road, all right? So we're gonna think about sticking out our butt and we're gonna think about coming down and keeping weight over the um, our heel and the front foot. And then we're gonna think about standing up. So here, this might actually help you to make sure that emphasis stays in the back of your leg, okay? So this is a great thing. It doesn't have to be super deep, but what's important is making sh acknowledging where you feel stress or effort, back of your thigh, your butt, okay? And with a squat, a lot of people do this business and it puts emphasis on their knee, which we do not want. So same principle, you wanna think about sticking out your butt. Hanging on to a doorknob is awesome because it allows you to get back without tipping over. Because most of us have weak hamstrings, weak glutes, so when we sit back, we fall back. All right, so this doesn't allow that to happen. So it can be super shallow. You wanna feel your heels, you wanna be able to wiggle your toes. Hang on. Bring your hips underneath you and squeeze your butt. Or maybe you do go super low, but you just wanna make sure that you feel emphasis behind you, okay? So, I would love to hear if you use that. I would love to hear if that enables you to actually move and or exercise when you previously thought you were not able to. All right? So anyway, I love you all. I hope you are enjoying this glorious weather. 
and um, that you be in touch. If any of this is interesting, confusing, um, if you deserve, you deserve, you deserve the best, if you desire to know anything additional. Okay. All right. Thank you. Until next time.